how do we build container images in a Kubernetes native way? Now you might be thinking, hey, that's easy. I execute Docker image build or Kaniko this or whichever tool I'm using and I'm building images. That is not how we do things in Kubernetes. And let me explain why I'm saying that. For every type of workload or type of tasks or whatever we are doing in Kubernetes, there is a resource definition that we use. For example, if you want stateless applications, we define deployment. If you want stateful applications, we have stateful sets. If you want to run our applications as serverless, we have Knative. There is a cron job for, well, cron jobs and so on and so forth. And some of those resources are made to be used directly, like uh, deployment, while others are more like building blocks or inspirations so that somebody can build either on top of those resources or replace those resources altogether. A good example could be jobs or cron jobs in Kubernetes. Not many people use it. Instead, when we want to run some tasks or a set of tasks at specific intervals or maybe as a reaction to some events, we have custom resource definitions like Tecton or Argo workflows and so on and so forth. Nevertheless, we do not have anything similar, at least not that I know, for building container images. There is no Kubernetes resource definition, at least not that I know, that we can apply and tell Kubernetes, hey, this is where the source code is, this is how I want to build my images. This is when I want to build. And this is where I want to push those images. There is no such a thing, at least not that I know. Or to be more precise, there was no such a thing until recently. And now we got it and the project is called Shipwright. Now, to be honest, project exists for a while, but what makes it special is that sometimes in August 2021, if I'm not mistaken, the project joined CDF or Continuous Delivery Foundation. And that's what we are going to do today. We are going to explore how we can leverage Shipwright to simplify and improve our experience on building container images inside Kubernetes clusters. And when I say Kubernetes cluster, it could be theoretically at least anything. It could be a local cluster like Kind or Minikube or K3D or whichever other you prefer, or it could be a remote cluster, GKE, EKS, AKS, Alibaba, on-prem, Rancher, this and that. It does not matter which Kubernetes you're using. What does matter is that you can use Shipwright to build your container image and push them to registries from inside Kubernetes clusters. And that opens a whole new range of possibilities, which we are going to discuss later. For now, I want to show you how Shipwright works. And after that, we are going to talk about it and see whether it's something that you should be using, what are the pros, what are the cons, and so on and so forth. And now you might be saying, hey, what's wrong with the tools I'm using? What makes it special to be Kubernetes native? What's wrong with Docker or Kaniko or whichever other tool we might be using? So let me tell you what's wrong with those. They are all CLI based. And now you might be saying, hey, CLI is great. I execute a command and something happens, but that's the model we are trying to move away from. The whole purpose of Kubernetes was to avoid using CLIs, at least not in a way that we are used to using them. Instead of imperatively saying, hey, do this and then do that, and then once you're finished doing that, do this, we want to let the control plane take over and manage the orchestration of our tasks. So instead of saying, do this, we are trying to say, hey, this is the result, this is the state that I want to have. Go and do your work, Kubernetes. Shipwright is based on four distinct elements. We have the source code that defines what should be built. We have the output image that defines where the result should be stored, which is typically a registry. Then we have the build strategy that defines how the image should be assembled. And finally, we have the invocation that defines when. When should an image be created? Now, before we explore Shipwright, I must tell you something in advance. I'm not convinced that Shipwright managed to accomplish all those goals. I think that it failed at one of those four. However, I will reserve that discussion for later. First, we are going to see how it works, and then we are going to talk about it together. Did it accomplish its mission? What are the pros and cons? And should you use it? Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Let's see Shipwright in action.
I will not bore you with the setup steps. I already created a cluster. I installed Tecton. By the way, I didn't mention that before, but Shipwright is built on top of Tecton. So Tecton is a requirement for Shipwright to work. It doesn't matter really whether you're using Tecton for other tasks or not, but for Shipwright you need it. It is lightweight, so you shouldn't worry much about it. Then I installed Shipwright. And finally, I created a secret that contains the authentication to the registry that I will be using, which in my case is Docker Hub. But you can use any other registry, ECR, ACR, uh, JFrog, Artifactory, or whatever else you might be using. By the way, if you're not familiar with Tecton, I have a video. I think that it compares Tecton with Argo workflows. You might want to check it out. The link is in the description and probably above my head. I'm not sure. Maybe I forgot to put it there. I already have a demo repository. And apart from the source code of my application and what's not, it has a Docker file that defines how an image should be built. I will not go into details of how Docker file works. I will only say that I define it as multi-stage builds. Actually, I have a video about uh, using Dockerfile multi-stage builds, so you might want to check it out as well. Anyways, Dockerfile defines everything I need. It will build a binary and then do this and do that. I'm not going through it. What matters is that I have it and we are going to see how we can leverage it through Shipwright to build uh, our images inside Kubernetes clusters. Before we proceed, let me show you cluster build strategies. They define how an image could be built. Or, to be more precise, they define how an image can be built depending on the tool that we are using to build that image. We do not need to worry much about the tool because that's all responsibility of Shipwright. We just need to choose which strategy we are going to use. And that can be Builda, BuildKit, BuildPax, Kaniko, KO or source to image. I'm not sure what source to image is. I think it might be deprecated. Anyways, we can choose any of those build strategies. And today I'm going to use Kaniko. Why? Well, I'm glad you asked. I believe that Kaniko is the best way to build container images. You might or might not agree with me. If you want, you can check out the video about Kaniko. I have that one as well. The link is in the description. Anyways, I'm going to use Kaniko and you can use any of those. You will see soon that with Shipwright, changing the tool which we are using to build images is extremely, extremely easy. You do not even need to know how any of those tools work. That's the point of Shipwright. You just need to understand Shipwright and Shipwright will figure out what strategy to use and how to build an image using any of those tools. Now we need to define two types of resources. First type is build. It defines the source, the strategy, and the output. The source will tell Shipwright where is the source code? Where are the things that it should use to build the image? Then we have the strategy that defines how the image should be built. And finally, the output that tells Shipwright where to push images. Where should they be stored uh, after they're built? Or to simplify it, what is the registry where you keep your images? Generally speaking, this is something we define once for each of the repos. Later on, you will see how we define specific executions of those builds. For now, I want to comment on two potential issues, which we might or might not be able to solve later on. The source URL is whatever it is. We can define the repo, we can define the branch, maybe even a commit or a head of the branch or whatever we want. But that is going to be the same for every single build and I'm not sure whether that's a good idea. Further on, we have the same potential issue with the output image. It is whatever it is. It is in a way hard-coded, and I do not want to build always the same image with the same tag. I need to have a different tag every time I build an image. In other words, there is one requirement and one nice to have thing that might be missing here. The must have is that I need to have a different tag every single time and not to build the same image over and over again. And a nice to have, but not necessarily an issue, is that I want to build images based on a specific commit. However, if that's not possible, I can live by building images based on the source code from the head of a branch, potentially the main line and maybe from pull requests. Anyways, there is one requirement that must be fulfilled, specific tag for every single image, and one nice to have thing, which is specific commit to be used to build an image. Now let me apply that definition to the cluster and we can move on towards defining build runs. 
we will have a build run for every single image that we want to generate. And the only requirement for build runs is to specify the reference to the build that we want to use. And optionally, we can specify or overwrite the output image defined in the build. So one of my two problems is solved. I can specify which specific image and which specific tag I want to build every single time. I'm still not sure whether I will be able to build uh, based on the source code from a specific commit because builds are more or less static while build runs are created every single time we want to build an image. So if I cannot specify it in a build run, then it will not work. So I guess I will have to build from the head. Now let me create or generate the first build run. Unlike builds, we cannot apply build run. We need to create it because there should be a different build run resource every single time we want to generate a container image. Now let me take a look at all the build runs I have in the system, which should be only one because this is the first build run that I created and see what's going on. What is the outcome of all this? We can see that it is running and it is running and it's still running and there we go, it succeeded. The build run is finished, it was finished successfully and I should have a new image stored in Docker Hub in my case. Now if you want to get more details about each build run, we can just describe it and take a look at the statuses and the events. We can see that all steps have completed, the status is true, it succeeded and all the jazz, all the things that we need, the statuses are there but events are missing and I think that's a mistake. I do not want to go to the other extreme and see hundreds of events. Some people do that. I think it's a bad idea but a few events that describe what happened or what is happening would be a welcome addition to Shipwright especially when things go wrong. Nevertheless it's not a big deal if I don't have events for this. I can live without them. Now let's see what would we need to do if we would like to build a second image. I just built the tag 001. Let's try to build tag 002. What would be the process? So I'm going to edit build run yaml, change the tag from 001 to 002 and then create another build run. As a result, I should have the second build up and running in my system. I can see it by executing get builds. And indeed, there is a second build. It is running and running and running. It takes a couple of moments and then it succeeded. And that means that the image with the new tag was built and pushed to my container image registry. And that's about it. Now I'm a paranoid person, I need to verify everything at least once or twice or three times. So I'm going to go to Docker Hub and double check that the images were indeed built and pushed there. Otherwise this would all be pointless. And it is not there. But don't panic, that's photo of Docker Hub. Often you need to refresh the screen with the tags to see the latest tags. It gives you some cached version. So make sure to refresh the screen after you open the list of the tags of that image and you should see versions 001 and 002. And that's Shipwright. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. I love it even though it has some potentially problematic parts or maybe missing pieces. Nevertheless, the direction is amazing and it fulfills a couple of really important objectives. First of all, it simplifies the process of building container images. Typically, we would need to clone the code ourselves and then build the image and then push the image and maybe do a couple of additional steps. Shipwright combines all those into one package that is extremely easy to use. I do not need to know how Builda or Kaniko or whichever tool I'm using is working. All I need to do is tell Shipwright, hey, that's where my source code is. This is the strategy you should be using or the tool you should be using to build images. This is where I want you to store those images. And that's about it. I do not need to know the details of the underlying technology or the tool that is doing those things. I do not need to figure out how to clone my code separately. I do not need to know much more than specify a few lines of YAML. If we go back to the beginning, I said that Shipwright solves four problems or that it is based on four elements. It defines what, which is a source code, and I think that it partly accomplishes that goal if the project would allow me to overwrite the source URL defined in the build through build run then that would be brilliant then I would have the what part of the story finished as it is now this works only if you're always building from the head and not from a specific commit 
I mean, you can circumvent that, but it is not really easy or intuitive and what's not. Second, it answers to the where question. Where do we want to push images? Well, we just specified the image and assuming that there is a secret with the credentials, Shipwright takes care of the where part of the whole story. Then we have the how. Uh, or build strategy. Shipwright simplifies it greatly. I do not need to know how Canico works or build or what's or not. I just need to tell it to use one of those tools or one of those strategies. And finally, there is the when element. When do we want to build images? And I think that this is the part that Shipwright alone does not solve. I would need to have some kind of eventing mechanism that would create a build run whenever I push something to the main line or maybe whenever I create a pull request or whatever the logic is. Or, as an alternative, I might have a pipeline that is triggered whenever I push something to Git. And that pipeline would create build run either directly inside of the cluster or maybe push it back to the Git repository and then let Argo CD or Flux do the synchronizations, create those resources. Anyways, I think that the when question or invocation is not really solved with Shipwright, at least not with Shipwright alone. We would need to figure it out somehow outside Shipwright. And that is potentially the biggest uh, negative point for Shipwright. Even though it advertises the invocation as the fourth pillar of Shipwright, I do not think that it is there. So far, I have two negative points for Shipwright. It does not allow me to overwrite source URL from the build run, and it does not solve the invocation part of the story, because I definitely do not want to run kubectl create every time I want to create a new image. So I need to figure out how to hook it into a pipeline or maybe create events. I think that I'm more inclined towards the latter case. Anyways, it is not a problem. It is easily solvable by additional tools, but it would be nice if Shipwright would have invocation baked in because then it would be fully self-sufficient. I could use Shipwright alone for building container images and it would fit perfectly into my idea, the idea I have in my head that we should move away from monolithic pipelines into event-driven type of tasks but I might talk about it in a different video. This would be a subject by itself. What else? What else did I not like about Shipwright? Yes, documentation. There are links that lead to the non-existing pages and that's kind of annoying. For the most part, documentation is good. It lacks a few examples maybe and some links are broken, but hey, I've seen worse. Finally, the last negative thing I can say about Shipwright is that it does not work in every Kubernetes distribution. There is at least one where it doesn't work, and that's K3D. It gets confused with authentication and secrets inside K3D or K3S in general. And it's a pity because I love K3D and I love K3S. Nevertheless, you're probably not going to use it for real in K3D. It's mostly for demos. So I will ignore the fact that the project is ignoring my favorite Kubernetes distribution when working locally. Now let's talk about pros, the advantages, the good things about Shipwright. To begin with, it is Kubernetes native. It is the first tool that I know of that is designed to build container images in a way how Kubernetes expects us to work. And that is by creating Kubernetes resources instead of executing imperative CLI commands. Using Tekton is a great idea. That's how Kubernetes ecosystem works. We are trying to avoid reinventing the wheel and creating things that are missing and improving the things that already exist. Shipwright could have built its own orchestration of building images, but why would it do that when there is Tekton or Argo workflows, the project chose Tekton, I'm fine with either of the two, both are great tools. And I'm really happy that Shipwright builds on top of Tekton instead of trying to figure out by itself how to do some of the things that Tekton is doing for the project. It unifies and simplifies building into one comprehensive toolkit. It abstracts the differences and the complexity of using any of the tools that we might be using for building container images and combines those tools with other things that we need, like getting the code from a code repository, pushing the images to a registry and so on and so forth. Overall, I think that the project is amazing. And from now on, I will be building my images using Shipwright because it makes more more sense than dealing with builders themselves, than dealing with Kaniko directly or builder or whatever I might be using. 
Nevertheless, there are a few things that I would like to see in the future, few requests to the community. Dear community, dear project members, please, I beg you, add source URL to build runs just as you did with the output image. And here's why. I would like to have one build definition that would encompass many different situations and then just execute a bunch of build runs. Hey, run a build for this commit in this repository, then run a build for that commit in that repository, and so on and so forth. I can already do that on the image level, but I cannot do that on the source URL level. And the second request would be to finish the story that you started. The documentation says that you are dealing with four pillars and one of them being the invocation. I want to see invocation baked into Shipwright. It would be amazing if I could say something like, hey, take this, 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 and that repo, monitor those branches or pull requests or whatever. And whenever I make any change to those filtered repositories, please build my image using this pattern. Now I know that I can do that with Tekton or Argo workflows or maybe Argo events. There are many ways how I can do that, but it would be great if it could be part of the project. Actually, now that I said publicly that uh, we can do that, maybe one of the upcoming videos would be how to connect Shipwright with, let's say, Argo events and connect that process with deploying using Argo CD or Flux. Argo events could take care of triggering Shipwright build runs and Argo CD or Flux could take over the process after images are pushed to container registries and if you combine all those together I think that we would be a step closer to have event-based pipelines instead of monolithic pipelines that uh, most of us are using. Please let me know in the comments if you would like to see a combination of Shipwright with a few other tools.